the 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 cultural shift of players coming in now. We not, you know, on our on our team, it's almost like we got practice tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? And that's not this is not me knocking my teammates because we had a really like a hard, real practice. You know what I'm saying? But like our team is like they're on a team with me. So we talk about this stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, look, this the way is this the way it is, you know, like this the way it goes sometimes. And they'll accept it. But when you don't have somebody on your team that's like that's letting you know how it should be and they respect you enough because they see your real behavior. Just imagine like what's really happening. There's so many teams out there that don't have it. You know what I'm saying? So they're probably really getting up like, why are we doing this? You know what I'm saying? Like, what? why would we why would we be practicing? All right, man. I really didn't want to make this video and I was hoping that the streak would end before we reached historically bad levels. But unfortunately, we have to end this year on a pretty bad note. The Detroit Pistons, as I record this video, they're in the midst of some of the worst history, not just in basketball, but in all of American pro sports. 28, possibly 29 today, but currently 28 consecutive losses, which ties the record for the most consecutive losses by a team in NBA history. This year, they've already broken the record for the most consecutive losses in the season, breaking Sam Hankey's record when he was actively trying to tank. That team was purposefully trying to lose, signing G League players and accessory pieces that shouldn't have been getting the minutes they got to get Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, etc. And also the post LeBron Cavs after he left and they got absolutely nothing in return. This is the company that the Detroit Pistons currently have now eclipsed. Think about their season and Pistons fans, I truly hate this for y'all. At least y'all have the Detroit Lions that's competitive. Goff gets rid of it, incomplete. And now the Cowboys maintain their lead. They start their season against the conference champion Miami Heat and they barely lose. Their best player K comes back and has 30 in almost his first game in a full calendar year. And it's truly a promising start for an organization that's been terrible for going on two decades now. They're following two games. They beat Charlotte and Chicago convincingly. And they actually have their first above 500 record with multiple games played in the season since 2018. That's five years ago. Then after that, they literally never win for possibly the rest of the calendar year. Now think about it like this and why Pistons fans truly have a reason to be infuriated and scream sell the team at every single game. This isn't a team that just started their rebuild. The GM for this team, Troy Weaver, he took over in 2020 after being partially credited and associated with that beautiful rebuild at OKC. I'm talking about the rebuild that got Russell Westbrook and James Harden and Kevin Durant. Anybody that hears that would think that's the slam dunk move. But even if you look at his first draft move, it really turned into a disaster and it's been a great representation of his tenure ever since. He drafted Killian Hayes with the fifth pick, a good defender and actually a solid playmaker that would be much better if he could actually score, but he literally can. Since he's been drafted, he has the worst true shooting percentage of any player. If you really wanna dive into how terrible of a pick this really was, Killian has truly been given chance after chance after chance. He averages 26 minutes a night for his career. In that span, out of everybody that gets the burn he actually does, he's by far the least efficient. And what obviously makes this pick even worse, and I'm not trying to hone in specifically on the Pistons because multiple teams missed out on these players, but he was drafted over Tyrese Halliburton, arguably the most efficient young player in the league now. Also, Tyrese Maxey, Desmond Bain, Devin Fassell, all players that could have possibly been tremendous contributors to a stalled out, stagnant, regressing rebuild. And I wanna talk about their best player, Cade Cunningham, for a quick second. Since Detroit has been on this historically bad losing streak, I've watched about six or seven of their games closely, really trying to see why they're so bad. But it's hard to judge him harshly with the terrible construction of this roster, and that goes back to Troy Weaver. It's no secret, I'm sure you've heard this all over the sports media, but the Pistons have some of the worst facing in the sport, which leads to him getting double teamed a lot. 
That's definitely a reason why Cade leads the league currently in total turnovers. He has one of the worst turnover percentages. Despite running the pick and roll with some of the most in the league, he has one of the worst point per possessions out of everybody at the top of that category. The Detroit Pistons are dead last as far as open three-point attempts. So again, even though I'm not the biggest fan as far as Cade being a life-changing number one pick, even the stuff that he is great at, he can't even maximize because the construction of the roster is that terrible. I saw Rusty Buckets tweet something that I've actually been thinking for a while now. Shout out Rusty. But I believe the age of the wing defender that's an absolute zero offensively is dead now. It's over. The Pistons currently have two of those guys that get significant minutes and their top five draft picks, Killian Hayes and Asar Thompson. I'm not trying to bully this pick because I actually like him as an athlete and he probably could develop in the future. But if you look at the worst plus minuses on the Pistons, it's number one, Asar Thompson, Kay Cunningham, who plays some of the most minutes, Alec Burke, who's having the worst year of his career, and Killian Hayes. Also, the coaching and why this team is actually such a disaster to watch. The Detroit Pistons gave Monty Williams the biggest, most massive contract in the history of the NBA. I don't want to say everything is Monty because he could be low-hanging fruit going back to his tenure and how stuff ended with Phoenix. But damn, bro, this is terrible. Jaden Ivey being benched for Killian Hayes. I'm not sure how I feel about that. A lot of times they blow leagues because they send out five-man bench rotations. Coaches really don't do that. You got to have a starter to keep the team afloat, especially when you're desperately trying to get a win and your roster really isn't that deep. Like, that's kind of outdated. And, and I'm not saying it's all his fault, but a good part of it has to be. They have some of the worst late game executions that I believe I've ever seen in my entire life. And the stats prove it. In the clutch this season, these are games they could have won. Look at how terrible they've been. Net rating next to last. Defensive rating, one of the worst. Offensive rating, I didn't even know it went that low. True shooting percentage, again, I had no idea it went that low. So for the 2023-2024 Detroit Pistons, on paper, you would never think they could be this bad because they seem to have some talent. But when you have one of the worst shooting teams in the league and your best shooter, Bojan Bogdanovic, has been gone for the majority of the year, and you're one of the worst defensive teams in the league, and the roster construction is so bad where the spacing is so bad that it makes players like Asar Thompson's weaknesses even more glaring offensively. And it adds more blisses and double teams to the few ball handlers you have like K, Jaden, and Killian. And none of your bigs outside of Stu can remotely create any type of gravity. And you play weird two-man big lineups in 2023 with bigs that aren't really that versatile. It is surprisingly the perfect recipe for one of the worst teams we've ever seen. And the cherry on top, going back to the clip that I put at the beginning of the video for anybody that was confused, this team has absolutely no real vets. I don't hear too many people talking about this, but I played that clip of Dame talking about the significant of vets because to me, that 1000% applies to Detroit. That team has no real vets, which in essence means no player guidance, which ultimately means a much harder job for Monty. Detroit, they're the second youngest team in the NBA. The oldest players they have is Bojan Bogdanovic, who seems to be the ultimate pro, but he doesn't really strike you as a leader. Alec Burke, who respectfully, he's lost 17 of the 22 games he's played in the playoffs. And Joe Harris, who I forgot is even in the NBA, I'm being honest. They don't have that respectable presence player-wise to me at all. Perfect example, look at the Houston Rockets. Their whole culture shifted, not only by just signing Ime Udoka, a great coach, but to me, making the perfect chess moves in the offseason. Last year, they were the youngest team in the NBA, and they played like it. Now, they're not, and they don't, because they added Jeff Green, fresh off a championship, a player that's played with multiple great players, and I promise you, his presence is vital for that locker room. Laugh at Dylan Brooks if you want, but he's chippy, he's edgy, he fits their culture, and he has been in big games. Fred Van Vliet is an absolute dog. He's undrafted, he's chippy, he's a champion, and again, he completely fits their culture. All of that is to me, even in a supposed rebuilding stage, while they're very competitive and they're trending towards the positive direction in a very competitive conference. Well, what about the OKC Thunder? They're second in the West and they're actually the youngest team in the NBA and they play absolutely nothing like that. Even their coach is 38 years old and he possibly might be the coach of the year. Well, look at their best player, SGA. A part of the reason why I think he's so polished and so good and always under control and never really phased is the fact that he's actually has some great guidance and experience 
even at like 24, 25 years old. As a rookie in LA, he was on one of the oldest teams in the league with not a bunch of talent, but multiple vets. Listen to Patrick Beverly talk about him. I went to Shea Gilgis, me, me and Shea text. And, he's, and he texts me on some like, yo, from day one, you told me that I was gonna be a superstar. From day one, when I seen this young boy with the Clippers, and you know, he no drink, no smoke, just, you know, locked in on basketball, locked in on fashion. And we made sure we stood on that shit. Like, you can't go out with us. We better not see you out with us. Like, why the fuck, like, get the donuts. Like, we, we did everything, like, perfect when it comes to his, like, like, like building him up his rookie year. And his second year, he had Chris Paul. That Clippers team made a playoff push and surprisingly took the KD Warriors to six games. This was him as a rookie, as the youngest player on that team. Then he gets traded to OKC with Chris Paul. Say what you want about CP3, but he's easily one of the best leaders in the NBA. Listen to him talk about SGA. And um, man, Shea, he just a basketball head, right? You show me somebody love basketball and crazy about their family, then me and them gonna be tight, right? And so Shay would come over to my house uh, before practice just to eat because I had a chef. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Night after games, Shay at my house, him and Darius Baisley, Lou Dort or whatnot. So he's so good when it come to come to hooping and he just an even better person and I mean that. So Shay, believe it or not, even as a young player in this league and the most talented player on that team, he is the vet. The Detroit Pistons, they don't really have any veterans or even a young player with a smidget of real May June experience. And to me, that matters. So in conclusion, bad, terrible roster construction, questionable coaching, multiple bust bigs, and the lack of a real veteran presence, it's a recipe for arguably the worst team that we've ever seen. If you guys like this video, make sure you like this video. Thank you to everybody that's watched my channel in 2023. Every new subscriber I got, everybody that reaches out to me, I see it all. I appreciate it all. In 2024, it's going to be much better. So happy new year to everybody. I hope everybody stays safe tonight. Um, do all that great stuff, guys. And until next time, as always, happy new years. And stay tuned.